M24 is the Sagittarius star cloud, and it's actually one of the biggest items in the Messier catalogue, at least in terms of the amount of sky that it covers. But it's one of these strange items in the Messier catalogue that, well, you can't really call it a Messier object, because it's not an object. It's sort of a hole or a, or a tunnel that you're looking down, or a window. But galaxy expert Professor Mike Merrifield, he's far better at explaining what it's all about. I'm talking about an object that sort of isn't really there. It's different in the sense that it's not a single object, in that you're just seeing all the stars that happen to be along that particular line of sight. You know, if you think about a cloudy day with a little gap in the clouds, you know, you see that little patch of blue sky. The patch of blue sky isn't really an object because, of course, the whole sky is blue behind the clouds. It's the same story here. You've got a whole bunch of clouds, there's a lot of stars behind it. There just happens to be a place where you can peek through those clouds and suddenly you see this bright collection of stars behind. There is actually a small star cluster in there, NGC 6603, one of these little open clusters of stars. And in fact, sometimes people use M24 and NGC 6603 interchangeably. And I believe that's sort of incorrect. The Messier object really is the whole window and everything in it. One of the defining features of galaxies is that they have dust in them. They have this sort of sooty material which obscures the light of stars behind it. For every billion photons that are emitted near the middle of the galaxy, on average, one of them makes it as far as the Earth. The other billion photons basically get absorbed by all this muck along the, along the line of sight. There's a thing called the Coalsack Nebula, for example, which looks completely black because it's basically blocked out the light from all the stars behind it. In other places, it's less extreme than that, but actually our view of the Milky Way, our galaxy, is very strongly affected by these obscuring clouds. And if you look in a region where there's lots and lots of these clouds, if you just have a gap somewhere in them where there happens to be a region where you can peer through a long distance through the Milky Way, you see a lot of stars. Because there is all this obscuring material in the Milky Way, it's very hard to see what's going on at decent distances away. And having these occasional gaps in the clouds that allow you to glimpse through and see what's going on further away in the Milky Way helped over the years to build up the picture of what the Milky Way looks like. So, for example, there's another very famous window called Barda's window, after Barda, the famous astronomer who really sort of pointed out that there was this way of, of using these windows. Through Barda's window, you can actually peer all the way from where we are, essentially almost to the centre of the galaxy. The story has changed a little bit in recent times because infrared astronomy has really come to the fore. And one of the nice things about infrared astronomy is that infrared light, for the most part, just goes through these clouds. So if I went around the Milky Way with the most powerful vacuum cleaner ever and got rid of all the dust, <laughs> what would the night sky look like? It would be blazingly bright. In fact, if you look in the infrared part of the spectrum where you don't have so many of these problems, the Milky Way looks blazingly bright, but in some ways actually not as pretty because patterns of obscuration actually make the structure of the Milky Way much more interesting to look at. I guess the other thing to say about this dust that's obscuring our view, you know, it's not like the dust that collects under the bed. Space is not full of flakes of dead skin. Okay? Dust in the astronomical context is much more like sort of soot or smoke. And this smoke is actually produced by stars. It's generally in the late stages of stellar evolution that some of the outer layers of the star are very weakly bound on and it actually starts emitting essentially a, a sort of a strong wind off the surface that some of this material gets thrown out at that point. So those, th those stars would have to pay a high road tax? They would, yeah, no, there's, there's certainly some polluters out there. That's certainly true. If you'd like to follow more about what's going on with Deep Sky videos, see some stuff behind the scenes and extra pictures, you can follow us on Facebook. There's the address, somewhere around there. And also on Twitter. And I've also put the links to those in the description underneath the YouTube video.